In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps and the difference between periods and commas and semicolons and just a little bit of formula writing basics, right? I had a, taught a private class this week and they asked a question in a way that no one ever asked before to kind of break that down. And so I explained it to them and I thought, hmm, maybe I should explain it to you guys too. So first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're gonna do a little Power Apps basics, if you will. Well, not really basics, right? We're gonna get into some details. But one of the things I wanna talk about is just the formula language, the Power FX, and the difference between periods and commas and semicolons. So when do you use them? What do they mean? And just some formula writing, control referencing basics. But I think that's something that we don't cover often enough. Like I said, I was teaching a private class this week. I have another one coming up in two weeks and public classes, whatever, I have lots of classes. Um, and so I get lots of student questions. And then so I thought it was a great question these guys had kind of driven me to answer. I also thought as we do this, the other thing that has plagued me for a long time as a content creator, right, is that not all of you are from the US. Ah, who knew? You know, tens of thousands of my viewers are not US based. And so there are some nuances in Power Apps when you write formulas in languages where the decimal is, um, a, where you use a period as the decimal separator, so like in currency, versus if you use a comma as the decimal separator in currencies. And so if you're in those two different boats, the way that uh, you know commas and semicolons work are different. So we're gonna cover a little bit of that in this video also, but it's a setup for Next video, I believe, I'm gonna talk about the language function and I'm gonna like do some stuff in like a French browser to like really, A, make my brain hurt, but B, help you guys connect the dots a little bit there. So, should be fun, should be fast. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on the desktop, I just have a blank white screen, right? Nothing starting, but we're gonna just kind of start at the beginning. Probably the easiest thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna just throw a uh, text input on the screen. And so we want to first start with, you know, what do the periods mean in your formulas? So if I add a label down here, and so the idea of a period is it kind of lets you go one level deeper, right? It's, 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 it's a digger. And so whether you're referencing a record and you want to get into a field or a control and get to its property, you know, it's just a way to kind of scratch and go a little bit deeper on the surface. And so the first great example of that is if I just go here to this label and I'm like, hey, for your text property, I want you to be text input one. So that, as you can see, you know, Power Apps has helped me. It's like, hey, this is the whole control. Now, Power Apps is also cheating and showing me the value of the text, even though I haven't told it to. As a rule of thumb, don't ever count on this. Don't ever reference, if you want the text out of that control, get the text out of that control, okay? So to do that, what you're gonna do is text input one. That's the whole control. I don't want the whole control, but think of that as a record. The control is a record, it's not, but think of it as a record. If you do a dot here, or period, this then shows you the available properties from there. And so a lot of times it will auto suggest the first property you're most likely wanting, right? So text input one dot text. So if I select that, then I get the actual text, right? The output data type here is text. So Periods are most commonly used in cases where you want to dig. Same type of thing if we put in a drop down here. You know, and so I just do another label. And so if I wanted to dig into that, I could do the control name. So drop down one dot. And so then now it's like, hey, here are the things. So I could get the height, right? That's a property. It is 40. That is the number of uh, pixels high that that control is. Not what I wanted, but I could get that out because I can do a dot to dig into additional properties of the control. But what I really want here is dot selected. Now, when you go to drop down one dot selected, notice here it's telling me that, you know, if I hover, it'll tell me, I want text. Labels want to show you text, but it's like you're giving me, look over here on the right, you're giving me a record. Oh, so once again, how do we dig? We use the dot. So drop down one dot selected dot. Oh, the only property of that particular record is value, right? The only field. And so if we do that, we see the one in the drop down. If we change this to three, we see that, right? So that is how we think about the period in more writing formulas, right? Is it's just a way to dig a little deeper. Anytime that you get, especially if you see errors about, hey, you gave me a record, I want a text. Like it's a good way to reference a little further. So that's the first one. 
And remember, that's going to hold true whether you're referencing out of data sources, out of controls. It doesn't matter. Dots are how you go deeper into the object that you're currently talking to. So the next up here, let's add a, let's not do a label. Yeah, we'll do a label. So let's say that we wanted to use a function. Um, let's do a button. I'm changing my mind here. And so here I want to write a function. And we're going to say, hey, when I press this button, I want to navigate, right? So navigate is a function to move to another screen, right? Now, up here at the top, this is kind of the thing that I want to re really take out of this. If you look up here, it says, hey, navigate and then target, right? So the target screen to navigate to. But notice that target is in a bold, which tells me that's currently what it uh, is waiting on me to give it. And it also is, because of the way it's written here, it's like uh, target comma dot dot dot. So what this is telling me is that target is a required parameter, but dot, 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 that means there's more optional things out there. So we have a choice whether we want to do this. So I could just do navigate screen one. I've fulfilled all of what it needs. I don't have to do the optional. So I could just close this out. And if I press that button, it would navigate to screen one, which makes no sense. Come on screen one, but we're not worried about that. We're just worried about how this works. But if we take hit the backspace up here in my formula bar, let's try it again, backspace. And so now if we wanted to see those optional parameters, if we put a comma right here, now it says, hey, the transition is what is required. Notice transition bolted out. And so now I'd have to give it a, a transition. So it's no longer optional because the comma there makes it now required. So to be like, oh, hey, I want you to use the screen transition dot fade. Once again, see the comma dot 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 at the end. So there are more optional parameters. So we could look at those. Oh, there's a context something. We're not going to get into that right now. Just hit the backspace, close this. And so then now if I press this button, it would navigate to screen one and it would use the fade transition. Notice up here as well, right? That screen transition dot fade. So this is showing you that screen transition is a type of, um, I think it's called enumeration. We don't really care, right? But so screen transition by itself doesn't work, but because I needed to dig deeper into screen transition, I use that same principle used a minute ago and we do a fade, okay? So that is how you do this. Now, if, remember we talked about if you're in one of those countries where the uh, you use a comma for your decimal separator, so France is always the first one that comes to my mind, then in your case, wherever you see me put a comma, you're gonna put a semicolon. All right, so if I switch over here, I have a browser loaded up in the French language, right? And look at this, I'm so smart, I know French. No, I just know how, I know what this is. I know this is the button. So I, up here, if I write that same formula in French, it's navigate, screen one. Now, look, if I do a comma, it yells at me. And it's like, I don't know what you mean. But it's trying to tell you right there. It says, hey, look, Sibel, I don't know, screen, I'm guessing, in French, um, or I think it's target. I don't know. Whatever it is. I'm not, I don't speak French. I, I apologize if I offended anyone with my French. I, I don't speak French. Uh, but so it's showing you that there's a semicolon there. So where I used a comma in English, you are going to use a semicolon. Oh, get rid of that comma. So you could do that. And then you could do screen transition fade. And so that is the same formula written in French because French is a language where the decimal separator is a comma. Okay. Kind of cool, right? I busted open a French browser. Kudos to me. I thought so. All right, back to the English browser. Whew, I survived. So that's uh, two. So now what if we wanted to do two things when we have this formula run, right? So in English, what we're going to do is we're going to do a semicolon here. And we're going to say navigate, so do one function. And so the semicolon says, hey, I'm done with that first function. I did the navigate thing. I'm good. I'm done. When that's done, now I'll do a separate thing. And so maybe here we're just going to say set, right? Let's create a variable called var hello. And then up there at the top says set variable, comma, give me the value, right? There's no optional parameters for this one, right? I see all of that right up here. So var hello, comma, Chewy said hi. Close our parentheses, or sorry, close our quotes. Now close our parentheses. Okay. So look. Navigate, blah, 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 semicolon, set, var, hello, comma, chewy, set, hi. So this will do two things. So semicolons are saying, hey, I'm done with the first one, and now I want to do the second one. 
Okay, if we switch back to my French browser, I'm not gonna copy, oh, I'm not gonna copy it, I'm not gonna cheat. Over here, anytime that you see me in English use a semicolon, you need to use two semicolons. So you're gonna do semicolon, semicolon, just like that, and then set var hello to be hi mom, like that. Now look, I did the mistake, it's yelling at me, it says, hey, you gave me a comma, and I don't know why. I mean, it says something different than that, but basically it's like, hey, this is broken. That's right, because that is not a comma. It would be a semicolon. So there you go. So there's a difference between the two um, if you're in the different language. So back over here, I think we're getting pretty close to all the things I want to cover. I didn't want this to be a super long video, but you know, that's what I was kind of after, right? So we use a period to drill into something, right? Whether it's we got a record back by like a lookup function from SharePoint or a uh, we want to add a table and we want to get a specific column, right? It's how we go one level deeper, right? So the, the period is your shovel, right? And it works the same in both languages. Um, a comma is going to be how you give a second, a third, a twelfth parameter, right? So Whenever you're out there writing your formulas, you know, and we're right here, remember we had the comma here, so it's like target, comma, transition, comma, and then dot, dot, dot is optional. So the comma is how we're going to provide multiple inputs. Um, and then finally, the semicolon is going to be, hey, I'm done with the first thing, but I want to do the second thing. So that way when you press this one button, two things happen. So, you know, just interesting, I think, enough to kind of get your brains going. Also remember, if you have the other language, it's a little bit different. But I promise later this week, um, by next Monday, by a week from today at the latest, I'm going to put out another video that will have, um, will just all be all about doing things in other languages, um, including the same stuff we just kind of briefly covered. So, all right, I think that does it for today. If you have any questions, any comments, ideas, like are there other really basic, you know, basics is the wrong word, core things inside of Power Apps. You're like, I don't know. I just put periods there. I just put commas there. Or I just put blah, blah, blahs. Tell me, right? I think these are very valuable videos, right? If you ask people, they'd be like, oh, everyone knows that. Everyone doesn't know this stuff. And it's okay to say that we don't know this stuff. It's okay to make people like me sit down and explain it, right? It's, it's hard to explain things like, I don't know, <laughs> try describing, figure out how to describe a period as a, uh, as a shovel is probably wrong. But, you know, anyway, uh, I guess with all that, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So. Check them out. Thanks and have a great day.